Thank you very much. Very good morning to you all. I'll try and uh, keep my comments as brief as possible. Uh, for, just as an initial comment, uh, the session that we are supposed to be speaking on right now uh, starts off saying R to B and uh, then goes on to talk of uh, international independent invest uh, investigation into war crimes and crimes against humanity. Uh, I'm not going to I'm not going to say anything with regards to R2P um, in this session because uh, I'm, I'm due to speak on my uh, on the uh, second session with regards to genocide and I'll make my comments with regards to R2P there. Um, but for for the purpose of this particular intervention, I'll 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 be dividing my um, words into two two sections. One is uh, talking about war crimes and crimes against humanity. Uh, so dealing with that particular aspect, um, focusing primarily on the time frame that we must be looking at. Yeah? Because there is already a discourse with regards to war crimes and crimes against humanity that has already commenced uh, in the international arena with regards to Sri Lanka. Uh, that time frame that is being suggested um, in the international arena right now is only with regards to the last stages of the war. So at best we are looking at the last three years of the war and at worst since January 2009 till May 2009. So I'm going to contest that time frame that is more or less already in this course and I'm going to uh, make the point that it has to be a much more time frame. The second section um, is with regards to international uh, international investigation, and here I will make the point that uh, obviously, if you look at what's happening now, international element of that investigation is absent. So I make the case for uh, not only uh, insisting on the international aspect of that investigation, but also suggesting certain practical uh, measures that has to be taken. Uh, in order to make sure that that investigation succeeds. So let me start with war crimes and crimes against humanity. As I, as I mentioned at the beginning, <clears throat> in today's context, I don't think we really need to make the case for the international community um, to accept the fact that war crimes and crimes against humanity has had taken place in Sri Lanka. The fact of the matter is, that that is already a given. The international community is acting on the basis that there is sufficient prime of SCA evidence to charge the present Sri Lankan government with regards to war crimes and crimes against humanity. It is on that basis that if you look at the March 2012 a resolution at the UNHRC, it makes that case very clear. The question is with regards to whether the allegations of war crimes and crimes against humanity can be limited to this present regime. Whether the way in which the war was conducted against the Tamils which, as a result, brought about allegations of war crimes and crimes against humanity, is only specific to the incumbent Mahindra Rajapaksa regime. That's the question that we need to answer. Because that is what the international community right now is trying to suggest. So it's a problem, as far as the international community is concerned, it's a problem with the present regime. It is not something more systematic, as in it is not something that is evident right through the 30 odd years of war. Now here I think this is where we need to make a difference. Our contention as members not only of this conference, but hopefully outside as well, certainly as, as parties who have been affected by the conflict, directly affected as, as the target 
our population as Tamils. I think it is important that we make the case and make it very strongly from now on that this is not something specific to this regime. If you look at the last 30 years of conflict that has happened in Sri Lanka, war crimes and crimes against humanity have in fact taken place right through. So that's the first point. If we are talking about war crimes and crimes against humanity, we must look at the entire time period in which that war actually took place. The second point is with, with regards to international investigations. I mean, we obviously in this conference are suggesting that it has to be international, but that is not the case. If you look at the March 2012 resolution that was passed, very clearly the, 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 the proposers of that resolution, which is the United States, and all those who back that resolution is trying to limit it to a domestic mechanism. Right? So I think, I think we need to understand the context in which that limitation is taking place. Because the people who want to talk about war crimes and crimes against humanity would rather have the investigations done in Sri Lanka locally so that it does not in any way embarrass a hopefully new regime that might take place, um, that might come into office in Sri Lanka. So our job or our task ought to be to insist, particularly in the context of what has been happening with regards to issues with regards to rule of law, with the breaking down of accountability, and the way in which the Sri Lankan state is conducting itself now, we must insist that it has to be an international mechanism that in fact takes place. And the second thing is, if this conference does in fact resolve that it has to be an international investigation, then the practical aspect of how that investigation is to take place must also be addressed. And for that purpose, and only for that limited purpose in this session, I would like to invoke the aspect of R2P, because my point is, if you are going to have an international investigation, then you have to create the ground situation in the island, particularly in the Northeast, for witnesses to be able to come forward and in fact put forward evidence. If you do not create that situation, you're not going to have a successful investigation in order to have a proper result. And in that context, R2P has to be addressed uh, in, in such a way where you create a situation, particularly in the Northeast, where you have a transitional administration that is created that goes outside the ambit of the present Sri Lankan constitution, where you have the international community as being observers and taking responsibility for the target audience, which is essentially the Tamil nation, to create a situation where there is safety, where they feel secure, and where they feel confident enough to actually engage in coming forward with evidence in order to ensure that a successful investigation takes place. Thank you very much.